Okay, well, I'm continuing really from the last um, recording. But in case it's too private, I'm making this a separate recording, so um, I don't have to publish it if I think it's best not to. The one that's put out, if they loved the person who put them out, their dad, they still love. Why? Because the dad still loves. He's put them out for the sake of the other children. Not to harm you. You're still his son, his child, his daughter. Do you see? He still loves you. It's just that he can't leave you in close proximity with the family because you're causing havoc. In other words, his relationship is still strong with you. And you with him, if you're wise, because he does love you. It's just that he can't let you close to the other kids. Because you're a menace at the minute. <laughs> that doesn't mean say he doesn't love you. And he's doing all that he can, and he can do a lot, <laughs> to bring you to life eternal fullness of life. So, we may be outside of heaven, but that doesn't stop God's love for us. And that love for us will win us over in the end. Because he's an almighty God that loves you. despite yourself at present. For he sees you as you will be, and from his point of view, it's worth it. And he has the ability and riches to achieve it, and he will. Love you, Dad. Thank you. Now, of course, the person in the world is, is another child like yourself. They have limited resources and um, they have to have priorities. So they give priorities to um, that which is a priority to them, that which they love most. And uh, to be excommunicated, therefore, is not to actually be excommunicated from God, but from the church, because the church has very limited resources. Um, it's running itself as an organization in the world. Um, it's not running on the conception of the unlimited provision of God, but the provision that it seems to have at any one time. And, and therefore to be excommunicated of, from the church is um, a deprivation to the individual. Um, it's the church's prosperity at his expense in some sense, or at his, to his cost. Um, yes, very true. What's that going to do with it? When your Heavenly Father is who he is, you don't need the church. You just need him. And that's what's so wonderful. You know, someone like, um, I don't know, or, or probably, well, certainly people like John Bunyan and, um, you know, these rebels who were rebels from the church, uh, because they put God first. Oh, infinitely blessed. Because they put the relationship with God before the church. They're not cursed before the, because the church has cast them out. They are blessed 
because they're the sort of person who will put God first, as they understand it. And they may be misunderstanding it. Well, that's all right. It's all right with God, because what really counts is that you're putting him first, God. And you think God won't reward such? Won't delight in such a person? My goodness. You're a person after my own heart. I will put you first. So he put someone like David first. In what sense is David, King David, I mean, after his own heart? I mean, an adulterer, and quite honestly, a murderer. Not to mention a most fearful warlord and king. It's because David is putting God first. Even with his... Is it mistress or wife? I can't remember. Who looks out the window and sees David dancing for joy? Um, I don't know. If you, <laughs> you know, it was unseemly and uh, un unroyal, and she despises him for it. But God loves him for it because he's putting God first. What do you treasure most? God loving you. Not the um, wife who's despising you. <laughs> you gotta have your, you gotta be rational about your priorities, haven't you? Love you, Dad. Thank you for your love to us. Oh my goodness. Thank you for your love to us. Thank you, Dad. For clarity's sake, let me say again then that um, if you like, the world may reject you for the sake of the others that the world cares for. But God does not because he is of infinite capacity anyway. And, uh, I mean, can still care for you. He doesn't have to take resources from you to to do the caring of someone else. He's not in poverty in that way. So he still cares for you, though on the outside now of the family. He's keeping you out for their safety. You're here on earth. Do you see? But he still loves you. And therefore, my goodness, it's most rational to love him because, because I mean, the ruler of the universe loves you. You're his son. It's so in your interest <laughs> to come back to him. But she's it's very peculiar relationship because God is all powerful and all loving and the children in the world are not all powerful and all loving therefore they excommunicate in a way that also means they're really having nothing to do with you but Jesus is not sending you out on ministry to have nothing to do with the world. On the contrary, he's sending you out that they might have life as well. To declare the good news that God is still their dad and loves them and is caring for them though they don't realize it. And they can always come back to him. You see, in the reality, God is loving you. And you are wrong in a sense until you're right with God. Right in the sense of pursuing that which truly is to your eternal life benefit. Whereas vis-a-vis -vis others in the world, 
they are not all powerful and all loving. And therefore, if they treat you as a heathen man, it means cutting off relationships with you. They're not going to put resources to you. They're not going to have you as part of their family. In the world, you see, you are rejected. Why? Well, ideally, because you are putting God first and they're not in their ignorance. You are still loving them in that you want their eternal life, but you can't be in fellowship with them because, well, they're not having you in fellowship. If necessary, they'll crucify you to get rid of you. So the church sees it necessary at times to crucify people that would otherwise have been members because the members are not conforming to what the church understands to be right. And they will therefore kill you thinking that they do God's service. But be of good cheer. <laughs> I have overcome the world, says Jesus. Well, of course, the sensible thing is to take the rejection. Don't force it down their necks, down their throats. Jesus in the story stays to have them crucify him. Demonstrates the point to you. That if you insist on what you understand to be their salvation, you will be persecuted to death. Do you want to go that way? Or well, don't do that. I send you into the world. I want you to be as wise as serpents. You're giving opportunity where you can give opportunity, but not more. You are not an enemy to the prince of this world. You come to rescue everyone in it, including him. But you are giving them their freedom that they so love that they might learn that really they need to love God who loves them and will bring them life eternal as opposed to the values that they have at present. So you are come that they might have life, not that you might be crucified. You are come to give opportunity not to demand and insist and press. On the contrary, you allow them their freedom to pursue the values that they have. But those who despair in that situation, who have ears to hear, or for some other reason so want to love God because they appreciate all that God is nonetheless doing for them though they are in the world of good and evil it is a, a terrific amount of good and they're filled with gratitude because of this they too may have ears to hear like Marshall <laughs> He wasn't in despair. Uh, not back then when I got converted. I don't know if I've been in despair occasionally since. Because, of course, um, things haven't always turned out as I had thought were for the best. And for a while I despaired until I remember the goodness of God. And then I recover. I stop despairing because God loves us. Both me and all of us. What sense then was David, just to remind you, um, a man after my own heart, says God? Well, because David's putting me first. 
Well, sure, David has all sorts of misunderstandings as to what my nature is and what's for the best. But he's devoted to me. Ah, oh, what a lovely child. It's so easy somehow to, to love him and bless him and because Well, he's just adorable. He's putting me first. Of course he's incompetent. He's a child. He misunderstands who I am and is doing all sorts of things wrong. But he is putting me first. He sees me as his dad. Well, misunderstands who I am in many ways. But do you see, David is a man after my own heart. He's not just my child. But he's loving his dad. Me. Ah, oh, aren't you a sweetheart? Thank you, Dad.